Hey everybody, Harvey here. So, exciting news in this video because I can finally announce that part three and final of my course is here. This one, it's all about cinematics. So, if you actually are interested in how the pros actually create cinematics, how they actually do the storytelling, how they manage actors, multiple characters, and much, much more in a pro pipeline, then this is for you. So, without further ado, let's get started. All right, welcome back. I hope you guys are doing well. So about four months ago, April 7th, I announced that the cinematics part of my course, which is the third part and final part, was gonna release soon. However, four months went past and it didn't release. And this is because I've been incredibly busy as you guys might have followed the channel with a bunch of different things. So I joined Rekindle, which is a, a new animation studio that we're trying to build and make it like a super amazing studio out there. And many other things that basically cannot be disclosed just yet, but will be disclosed in the future that have been happening. And it's all kind of happening super quick. So basically I've been working on the course slowly, but not at the speed that I initially anticipated and for that I'm really sorry. I'm also announcing today because it's the 4th of July that there's about a 15% discount on all of the course. So if you actually get the course right now you get part one, part two and part three with a 15% discount. Also you have the freshness of part three if you've been part of the course. Just know that one price gets you the whole course, all the videos, all the content. So I hope you guys appreciate the love on this 4th of July with this course. Now, for those that are not familiar with my motion capture course, it's basically a course specifically for anybody that is interested in motion capture, but also interested in the games part of motion capture. Um, it goes for everybody. It's teaching you how to actually capture, uh, how to clean up motion capture, how the pipelines work in games, and basically demystifying a little bit about how the pros actually attack and uh, produce these amazing cinematics and amazing gameplay and much, much more in games, but all to do with going to a volume, basically a studio, and actually capturing mocap and then what happens after that, right? So I'm super surprised and once again thankful for everybody that has joined me in this course because we now have close to 200 people in the course which is incredible to me and I'm really really thankful to everybody that joined the course and part one was all about like the basics of motion capture and basically teaching you exactly what motion capture is in games, how do we actually process motion capture and then some of the types of motion capture that exist in games. Part two was much more hands-on. It was all about cleaning up motion capture, the Maya side of things. How do you actually import, um, you know, retarget the character, get motion capture onto your character. All of this was done with the Nubian rig that was created specifically for the course that you get for free in this course. So it was really, really cool to see everybody kind of like understanding what goes on behind the scenes and also making the most out of it. Some of the work that you guys have done has been amazing. So the final piece of this puzzle when it comes to motion capture is definitely cinematics. Now this third part is gonna be a little bit more about explaining what the cinematic pipeline looks like. Because in games, there is two sides to the games, game gameplay, and cinematics. Those two things kind of happen at the same time, but in a lot of studios, especially the big studios, they are two different departments, but they all needed the same thing, right? Do you need motion capture to do the most cinematics, but you also need motion capture to do the gameplay. So we're gonna explain what's the difference between the two, what a cinematic animator does, what a gameplay animator does in comparison, and also what kind of things they have to keep in mind, because this is where motion capture goes to another level, like a really professional level, a, a really detailed level of, of, of basically, uh, so your characters can actually get to an amazing quality. So this is why you see a lot of behind the scenes on the cinematics, because you can see the actors with things on their faces and bodies and stuff. So in this module, we're gonna explain what that is all about. Facial capture, body capture, how to actually get it cleaned to a really high standard and much, much more. 
Now, this is definitely going to be a shorter part of the course because part one and part two, we covered so much of hands-on work that it needs to be done with motion capture. However, it's fully packed of information. And I do think that if you put the three parts together, part one, two, and three, you actually have a really comprehensive understanding of what goes into motion capture, what goes into games. And especially if you are outside of the industry, wanted to go in, it means that you're not going to be caught up like unknowingly thinking, what is this motion capture business, right? Especially for all Henke animators that want to learn more about motion capture. There has been quite a lot of animators that have lots of experience, that have taken the course um, and basically are wanting to learn about motion capture in games because that gives them an upper hand in the industry and getting into games because that's normally one of the things that we in games have to teach a lot of film uh, animators coming in that don't know about games because the pipelines are different, the implementation is different. So if you're experienced or if you're a junior or like not even in the industry yet, I think there's a range there for you to have in this course. If you've already taken part one and part two, what this part three will give you, it's actually the storytelling chops that you need to get into games. Because there's a lot to be said about seeing cinematics as the art form that they are and it's much more like film where you have to actually kind of think about cameras and character and, and personality and direct actors to kind of like do the performance that you want and we're also going to cover this in part three which is basically the things that cannot be um like you know it's not on paper right it's not something that you can practically do you have to learn from somebody that has been there and done that and basically kind of like take that knowledge and hopefully you know assimilate it and then do it yourself because what happens as you develop as an animator is that you normally start as a junior mid-level senior animator where you are very much hands-on and you are animating in front of the computer basically being director by your lead your director and then you do the best animations possible but at some point in your career especially in games you will get to be a lead a principal a director and at this point is where you normally get asked to go to a motion capture volume a motion capture studio and then capture some motion capture but the problem is that motion capture is really expensive in one hand and on the other hand the lack of experience with that expense normally end up giving you really bad results and especially as a lead and the director if you have lots of motion capture but nothing fits within the game it means that you just wasted a bunch of money and now you have to do it again with the new knowledge that you learned. This course is meant to actually save you all that drama <laughs> that you had and basically set you off in the right path. So you have like basically like, you know, markers in your way that allow you to basically take the best motion capture and implement it in the best way possible so you know what to do when the time comes. And if you are currently going through it, then it's even more reason for you guys to take this course. However, this marks the end of the course, part three. And I'm a little bit sad because it's been a lot of fun to basically get all this knowledge from my head in a lot of detail that I normally cannot do in these videos and share with you all in a way that is like, you know, episodic. And uh, the feedback that I'm getting from you guys and seeing you guys kind of like doing a lot of amazing work with the knowledge that you get, it's a lot of fuel for myself that goes on top of the fuel that I get here from you guys on YouTube in order for me to keep going and for me to keep sharing the stuff that I have in my head. So given the success of the course, given that it's the first, my, my first course that I'm doing, I'm already planning for new courses um, that I'm gonna release in my platform, but it's not gonna be only me, I'm gonna bring other people because uh, I feel kind of like self-conscious a lot of the time when I'm actually the only one like driving the knowledge. And I know that a lot of people out there have more knowledge than I have in a lot of different areas. So I'm gonna try and partner with people to make sure that you guys get the information that you need at a really high quality level, but it doesn't come just from me, but it comes from other professionals in the industry so you can learn from them. So expect for more courses, more information for all of you to hopefully help you in your path, in your journey to become an amazing games developer. Okay, so with that all being said, I hope you guys join me in the course. Enjoy the 15% off for the next week from today. And until the next video, stay well, stay safe. Peace.